Hey, Jay. Hey. We're doing another Claire episode. Yes. The people like the Claire they episodes. Do. They do. The numbers don't lie. No, and I was like, was it too close to the other one? And then the people's feedback said, no, no. No, yeah. Because if it's, if clairvoyance wasn't yours, you want to turn for yours. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> you probably are going, well, even if clairvoyance isn't mine mm -hmm. or another one is is or isn't, like we're doing clairaudience today. Perfect. I need to know more about it because the feedback we got a lot from clairvoyance was like, oh, I didn't realize that's what it actually was. Right. Exactly. So of all right. of the clairs... This one, Claire audience, when I teach this one, the most people go, I had no idea that was intuition. <laughs> exactly. It, well, it's just like, it's just a different version of the I see dead people. Like you yeah. think that that's what clairvoyance is. And if you don't right. see dead people, then you're not clairvoyant. I didn't know I was clairaudient until I started. I mean, I'm definitely clairaudient. You, you are. But you think that like, it's something else. You have this preconceived notion that it's something else. Absolutely. and. Where I think that happens the most in clairvoyance, where it's like misconstrued what it is, mm -hmm. I think clairaudience is like a pretty close second yeah, to that problem. Agreed. So I would like to direct you now to the Claire episodes. We have ones on all of the Claires, all of the psychic senses, inner senses, whatever term you like. Correct. For those. We have an entire episode on all of them, giving you an overview. So I'd like right. to, you to go to that one. You can go after this one if you yeah. like. Or before, and then also clairvoyance. We have a whole episode on that as well. So listen to that one too. Mm -hmm. But clairaudience is one of the inner senses. So again, it's most commonly referred to as psychic senses. Yeah. Me and you don't love the term psychic. Mm -hmm. It's it comes from a weird place. It's been taken to a weird place. It's just complicated. And as we'll talk about when we talk about clairaudience words and the vibration that happens when you say them and receive them have a lot of energy behind them words or spells so if that word also doesn't feel good to you you don't have to use it sure so don't point. Yeah. yeah so i usually say inner senses mm -hmm. they are your intuitive senses that's fine too like that but one. it it the clear part translates to clear in french i mean that's like the important part yeah okay <laughs> so First of all, Claire audience is not something that you hear with your outside ears. So I'm going to put an asterisk to that and I will go back. But when it is portrayed in the media, it's shown like someone sitting there and all of a sudden there's voices on their outside ears that they're hearing. Yeah. Like for me, I would think it would be like you'd see in a movie that like someone was sitting there and they heard their like dead grandmother, like, yeah, like talking to them. Right. But only you can hear them. Right. And that doesn't mean that doesn't happen. Absolutely. But generally, yes, that's the asterisk. But for the most part, that's different. not what Claire audience it's is. Different. Can it happen? Same with clairvoyance yes. where you see something with your outside eyes. Does that happen? Yes. yes. And I will talk about the instances that are the most common for it to happen there. Mm -hmm. I will absolutely talk about that. But another thing I'll tell you is that people who are clairaudient, I am clairaudient, but it isn't my top two. I have clairaudience. It's not one of my top two. I'd say for you, it's like a close two, three. Exactly. That you're it, swaps, hitting. it swaps between two and three. Absolutely. And I think when we get to claircognizance, that's going to be something we talk about where this, when claircognizance is first mm -hmm. and the other ones are secondary, that's common. Yeah. It grabs different ones. Yeah. Okay. But the other ones, if claircognizance isn't in your top two, you'll probably have something a little bit more fixed for a system. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. We will talk about how it happens with the outside ears, but clear audience people sometimes have trouble knowing if it was their outside ears or in their head. True. Okay. If you're not, I, clear audience is not strong enough for me that that's something that occurs a lot. Mm -hmm. Has it happened to me before? Yes. Right. Usually when I'm very tired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does it happen a lot more for people who one of their top twos is clear audience? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just to, just to recap again, I don't want to be a broken record if you've already listened to the other episodes, but just for your brain, I think it's worth saying you have all of the clairs. Everybody right. does. Right. Everyone has all of these inner senses. It is not only for highly intuitive people. Correct. 
everybody has these Mm -hmm. and they are not always used in an intuitive way in the sense of like talking to the dead. Exactly. Okay. It's used in your everyday life all the time in ways that are not fancy and impressive. Yeah. I think I'm thinking right as you're talking about how like the examples we've always, or I've literally just given in the past five minutes is like, yeah, you're seeing dead people or you're hearing hearing dead dead people. people. Like those are the only ways we're really receiving messages about intuition through, through media and culture is like, as it pertains to spirit. Yeah. But there's so much more to intuition. So much more. And I think sometimes it ends up sounding like I don't like mediumship or something. No, I love I love mediumship. I did mediumship in the beginning of my career. I I think it's incredible we both like going to mediums. Absolutely not. It's much more that we're trying to bring in a more everyday sense of intuition because the fact that it's only presented to you in an extreme way which is an extreme level of clairaudience or clairvoyance or intuition, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that it's only presented to you that way is on purpose. Right, because if you can't do that, you count yourself out. You're like, oh, this episode doesn't apply to me. This conversation doesn't apply to me. Right. That's not true. And as hope, my hope is that as we go through this stuff and you're listening, you realize all the ways that you use these all the time because right. every single person uses their intuition every single minute of every single day. Correct. And that's a big part of our podcast is helping you understand that. Yep. Do I want you to be able to talk to the dead if you want to? I do. Yes. Go for it. Mm-hmm. But you have to kind of start somewhere and build not just that skill. Correct. Okay. And you don't want to count yourself out, like you said, if you no. don't have that. Okay. So I want to start with correcting some misinformation. Okay. Because this stuff drives me bananas with a capital B-J. Okay. <laughs> I've never said that saying before. I just did right now. Maybe that's for someone listening. Because even people in the industry say these things wrong. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm a little bit of like a, like I'm wound a little tight. So maybe that's part of it. Okay. But it really does hurt people when you say the wrong stuff. Yeah. And as we said in our in our industry, there's this huge problem of like learning something from one person and then that like the wrong stuff they know just passes on and nobody questions it or makes it their own or True. learns from multiple people or checks into the origins and the cultures. And so we have all this stuff going out right. that's wrong and harmful. Correct. We okay. sure do. Okay. So let's start by correcting some of those things. Okay. Um, some of the definitions I looked up on people's websites who do this. Uh-oh said that clear audience was hearing into other dimensions. It's classic. Yeah. Okay. That's we, exactly the shit. Yeah. That we hate. That we hate. Hate with a capital H. Stop Why am I capitalizing like everything today? Um. I don't know. But that's like you're making it weird on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be honest. You're making it weird on purpose. And that's what we, that's what we don't like is that it makes you, you're trying to make yourself look superior. Yes. 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 Right. Like you have this ability that other people don't know. That's not what intuition is. No, it's not. It's literally why, that's why we're here. Yeah. It it literally makes me clench. Like my full body clench because it irritates me. Now, listen to me. I'm using listen to me on purpose. Yes. For Claire audience. I missed it. (laughs) Could part of Claire audience be that? Yes. yes. That's not all it is. No. And don't make it sound so like unapproachable. Don't make it weird, bro. Why? <sighs> Why? Why? Okay. So if you're taking a class on Claire audience mm-hmm. and the definition of it is this problem. Okay. But if you're into Claire audience and you've been learning about it for a while and this comes up as one of the topics, that's fine. 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 Right. But please don't state that as a definition. That's ridiculous. But think about how that makes you feel when you read that or you hear it. Like, it makes you want to opt out immediately. It makes you feel like, oh, I can't do that. Like, that doesn't hear into other dimensions. dimensions. Like, how do, we, how do you get to, where is the other dimension? Yeah. How do you get there? Like, Define the other dimension. I, I mean, it's right. Just, like, it's so unapproachable. I hate it. Okay. okay. Here's the other one did find it on people's websites as well. Hearing other people's thoughts. That's not it. That's just wrong. No. Mm -mm. Okay. I, this one is especially a little bit triggering for me, not in the sense that it makes me mad that people have asked me this question before or reacted this way, but in the sense that it's 
it's being told to people. So it makes them afraid to go see someone who's intuitive and get some help because people will say to me, Oh my God, I'm afraid you're reading what I'm thinking. Okay. First of all, I don't even like being in my own brain (laughs) and hearing my own thoughts. If you think I want to hear yours, you're crazy. No, 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 no. Additionally, that's not how intuition no. works. Your thoughts are not something that someone else can read. And if someone's telling you they're doing that, they're doing something fraudulent because I don't know any intuitive person who can read thoughts. Can you read emotion very easily? Yeah. Can you pick up energy? Absolutely. Absolutely. But like actually a thought. tapping into someone else's brain and hearing their thoughts, like as they're saying them, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. Now, I think the reason that people think I can do this is what, something I've talked about before, where whenever I try to take a random example of something, I pick something that's actually happening to someone near me. Yes. Okay. That is not reading thoughts. No. That is literally pulling in an energy, energy. of something and reading it. Right. And then saying it. Right. Okay. And also something that claircognizant people do, by the way. We'll get to that one. We'll we'll talk more about that when we get to that episode. Right. But there is not a reading of your thoughts. Can I say something that maybe alarms you? Like, how did you know I was thinking about that yesterday? Or that yes. But can I read the thought you're thinking? No. Can I guess how you feel about something based on the things you're saying very easily? Right. That's how people are tricking you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you didn't realize you're going to feel so irritated. At no, the I really did it. I really did not. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that make me sometimes want to, you'll like this because this is a very Jamie Hayhurst thing to do. Just like peace out of the industry. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it takes me like four deep breaths and then I'm, I'm back and I need to shout louder. Well, that's why I was literally just going to say like, that's why I don't, I guess I did peace out a little bit. Like <laughs> that's why I don't go on websites like that. Or yeah. I don't follow people yeah. like that anymore because I would see stuff like that and be like, yeah, I mean, I got to get, I got to get away from all of this yeah. or I'm going to just jump ship. Exactly. But with you, with you. It, but I think what it means is that we need to yell louder. Right. Right. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Welcome to this Here episode. Are, right. If you didn't realize this was going to be so sassy, take a breath and welcome to yeah. the sassy episode that it is. Okay. We've already said this, but it's not only to hear spirits or only to hear angels or only to hear God or whatever, right. fill in the blank. It's not only for like communicating with something otherworldly. That's not correct. the only thing. It, it is used for that, uh-huh. but it's not only not used for all that. Of it. Okay. Right. That's like a little tiny portion of it. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as telepathy. No. It is used interchangeably. I literally, I was starting a tally to see how many websites that I was looking on that called it telepathy and once i got to 10 i was like i'm done tallying. really this. yeah even if you do like a wikipedia or like britannica or like it says like telepathy okay what i <laughs> really <laughs> telepathy is taking a thought oh, or a subject and tr- and and thinking of it and having somebody else pick it up. But telepathy, just so you know, is not reading someone's thoughts. It's two people actively exchanging information. It is incredibly rare. I have never in person met someone who could do it. Do I think it, it, it exists? Yeah, I do think it exists. It makes sense that that could be something that would happen. Like if you, if you look at the stuff where like, if, if I donated blood, and like you were messing with my blood cells, the blood in my body oh, would right. react to it. Yeah. That's energy. And so I get that the concept Correct. of it makes sense. Yep. But is that something that a lot of people do and that's possible? No. 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 I've never witnessed telepathy happen. No. It's making my nose very itchy to talk about. I don't know if you want to read into what that means. Oh, huh, that's yeah. interesting. I, who knows? Okay. Makes me think of Ghostbusters. Yes. Like the first Ghostbusters when he's making them like read the, the cards. Yeah. I mean, he was obviously tricking them. Yeah. Which just plays into the whole like yeah. stereotype of intuition. It but does. like right. that would be a, a decent example of telepathy. Yes. And it, also I see people do stuff on, in, like on innocently, I think on like social media, TikTok, for example, where they're like, guess what the word is on this card? Like use your intuition and mm. get it. And I'm always like, oh, right. that's not a real... That's not really how you would sharpen intuition. Like, that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try. It's good for the likes. 
Yeah, but like if you were trying to do that in whatever words you got, like you have to think about what you were picking up. Good point. Why were what? Correct. Like I'll probably pick up the emotion behind why you wrote that word for everyone to guess. Not the actual word. Not the word. Right. Like, do you know what I'm yep. saying? So it's it's far more complicated than just making it like that. Well, yeah, but you can't put that in a 30 second TikTok. And it's not going to get you a lot of watches. Correct. So get, wait till you flip the word over. Right. Yeah. Okay. But again, I'm not mad at people doing that. Anything to sharpen your intuition is fun, but like there needs to be an explanation that like you're going to pick up whatever is more connected to like your your purpose, right. not your job, your purpose. Right. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. The thing I will say about telepathy, and maybe we'll do an episode on it if you guys want to know more about telepathy, is that anyone who I've ever seen claiming telepathy or doing telepathy, usually their number one clear is clear audience. Okay. All right. Which makes sense. You're yep. usually trying to hear, quote right. unquote, someone's thoughts or like exchange it and hear it. Yeah. But... It's not the same thing. Right. Telepathy is a wild, extreme thing that, again, mm -hmm. I think is possible, but I've never actually seen it happen. Right. I've seen a lot of weird shit, so. You have. Yeah. Okay. This one, this one is, like, very hard to explain to people. Okay. So I'm going to try and maybe you can help me. Okay. The voice you hear with Claire audience mm -hmm. is most always your voice, but not always. <laughs> Yes. So here, here. So that, let me say it's your voice and then put an asterisk, mm -hmm. okay? Because it might sound not like your voice, but mm -hmm. hold on. When you're doing clear audience, the majority of people, I'm not trying to say that everyone does this the same, but the majority of the time you're doing clear audience, you're trying to pick up words that you will then hear in your voice. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing the voices of, I'm not hearing your voice and then hearing your voice. And then mm -hmm. here you're hearing it being said because you're receiving the energy and it's coming through sound in your voice, in your mind. Yeah, mine sound like my thoughts. Me too. They don't, they're not someone else's voice. Okay. Now, when you're doing mediumship, this is mm -hmm. true for me, and mm -hmm. I would say I've met one medium who this isn't exactly true for. So again, I'm not trying to say it's all the same, but in general, I think it's important to understand this. When they are talking, quote unquote, talking to the dead, I'm saying quote unquote because it's not like a, like you're not waiting for 10 minutes or five minutes for them to say all the words, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like an exchange of quick words to get something. It's a, it's a, mm -hmm. okay. It's a whole, like, I think people are like, how did you get all that information so fast? They wouldn't have had time to say all that. Gotcha. Do you know what I'm trying to yes, say? I do. It's because it's coming in and you're hearing what they're saying through your own inner voice. Yep. So you're, what if you're, if I'm talking to your dead grandma, I'm not hearing your dead grandma's voice. Right. I'm hearing my voice say things that I know are coming from her and then I'm filling in the rest of the little pieces. Yeah, like you're processing thoughts. You're you're processing like the communication. Maybe communication is a better word than yes. talking. Yes. Good. Right. Yes. So I think people confuse that. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of mediums try to explain this and mm -hmm. it's very difficult to explain if it's not something you have experienced. Yes. Okay. And it's also difficult to explain because it's probably different for every single person. Yes. So even if you explained what happened in your process perfectly, yes. yes, it would be different than the way I would explain my process. Yes. So it doesn't, it matters, but it doesn't matter in some way. Yes. Like you have to get the gist of it. Yes. But it's not going to be exactly the same. Absolutely. And the only reason it's worth attempting to explain mm -hmm. is because the, the, the sort of like, quote unquote, naysayers or doubters or skeptics, right. a lot of times their biggest issue is like misunderstanding, right. oh, you're here. How are you hearing my dead grandmother's voice? And like, that's why you don't like that you're here into another dimension. Like, exactly. That's not what's happening. And right. I have, I have shouted out John Edwards before, mm. but I, I, I love you, John Edwards. I just truly, mostly because he has such little patience. Yes. If you've ever watched him, especially I when I used to watch him back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. Of when people say stuff like this. And I admire it so much. And it's because it's so exhausting to try to explain something to someone who can't even come close to understanding on the level of which you're speaking. Well, it also validates what he's doing. If he's not trying to convince you, then you have more faith in him. Yeah. He's just like, no, believe me or don't, but here we are. Yes. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So maybe go look 
when he had that show, do you remember the show? Mm -hmm. Was it in like the 2000s? Um, Late 90s, probably early 2000s. So go back and find a clip of him being irritated on that show and how he explains it. And it's the best explanation you'll get. Yeah. And it's the realest, in my opinion. And he's fantastic. Okay. He's a very... Obviously, very clear audience. Also, in the way he does it, is it? Wouldn't you say that the Long Island medium is clear audience? Also, like, yes, she always says like I'm hearing. She does. The only thing I think she's also clairvoyant though, because she writes down and like sketches things sometimes. Oh, okay. Or Tyler Henry will draw, mm-hmm. so he's clearly like very clairvoyant. So yes, interesting. That's but right. yes, I do think she says a lot of like I'm hearing or I'm getting. He's saying, he's saying right. yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, that those are ways you can tell. Yeah, okay. She's big on the TikTok lately. I see a lot of like little ads for her. I love her too. I'm obsessed with her. I love her. Shout she's out. So cool. Yeah, she's great. Okay. <laughs> oh, and so the little asterisk said it's not always your voice. Mm. Sometimes for some people it will come in in like a deeper or a like they you sort of create like a different voice to help you differentiate. Mm-hmm. That's a thing that some people I don't do that, but some people do that. Okay, yeah. so that is a thing. I just want to mm-hmm. say that. And then there are some people who will go on to like social media. I see this on TikTok and they're like, wait, you have an inner voice and they're so confused. Those people are just not very clear audience. And it's not that they're, it's not just about picking up stuff or mediumship. It's just like they don't hear things in their head because they're processing. Yeah. On the spectrum of clear audience, they're very, very low. Right. That's okay. And normal. And those people probably aren't going to same. I think a lot of people aren't going, those people aren't going to probably go into a mediumship field. Right. Exactly. No problem. It's fine. That's totally fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you how it does often come through. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to do some basic and not so basic things. I'm trying to mix it up for you. Okay. Okay. So the first is like ringing in your ears. Mm. I also realized that this could be a medical problem. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not trying to say it's always intuitive. No, but if you start to pick up a pattern of it, it probably is. And... Like if, if you have ringing in your ears and there's a medical issue for it, there could also be clear audience going on. Like yeah. it's not always one or the other is my right. point. We always are like, oh no, it's going to be this or that. Correct. Not really. Right. Yeah. So if that happens to you often, mm-hmm. um, that could be, that could be something. Definitely. And it's not necessarily the dead. For me, ringing no. in my ears has nothing to do with anyone trying to communicate to me, but it is a sign of something intuitive going on. Yeah, no, I think it's more like my system's trying to get my attention. Yeah. It's not dead people. Yeah, it's like, well, you've ignored everything else. How about yeah. if we make your ears literally ring? Ring, right. Yeah, it's like, all right, fine. Yeah. Uh, music as a sign. Uh-huh. This is something that happens to me a lot. And again, this is not even, it's not even in my top two, but this happens. That's why it's important to know all of them. Where a certain song will keep playing every time I think about something or every time I walk into somewhere, the same song is playing and it takes me a while sometimes to figure out what it means or like what's going on. That's a sign. This is how you and I are like the same but different Mm. in so many ways Mm -hmm. is that this, that happens to me too. Yeah. But I don't hear them in real life. They play in my head. Uh, So I'll hear like I will be. See, maybe if you're not clear audience, that doesn't happen to you. Right. Like if you're not the person that, if you're someone who doesn't have like an inner monologue. Yeah. But like I am perpetually hearing songs like playing in my, yes. like I'm thinking or I'm hearing songs or like I'm like hearing movie clips or something like yes. Adam Sandler movie lines, yes. but like in my head. If I'm hearing a song a lot yes. in here, yes. that's the same as it means for you, but you're hearing them like on your phone, in your car. And I think I think this is a good point because these are, I think, two different things. Okay. Both clear audience, yep. but two different ways of getting signs mm-hmm. because I think the one you're talking about is almost an earworm. It can be. Okay. Yeah. Where it's like, it, it's, there's this repetitive, when it's a sign, I mean, yep. there's this repetitive nature to it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And inside my head this phrase or this whatever will get stuck. Okay. For me, that's less of a sign than when the outside music is Mm -hmm. constantly trying to get my attention, but I'll feel on my inside a reaction to that. Mm -hmm. And I'll know that that's an intuitive experience. Right. Okay. Then there's also slightly different when you're, you're doing what Jamie is saying, where a song or a phrase or like Every time someone says something, it launches something else into your head. That happens to me all the time. I'm in a constant state of doing bits because of this. Same. 
because I somebody says something or does something and it makes me think of a bit that is currently running in my head. Correct. Okay. For me, those things are less of an intuitive experience and mm -hmm. I think a little bit more of a neurodivergent well, experience. I was going to say that's where these things overlap. We also have a whole episode on how those things overlap if mm -hmm. you would like to listen more yeah. because again, it's not a one or the other thing. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also know I'm in a state of kind of calm and grounding when I'm constantly doing that. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I'm kind of just happy. Letting your brain run. Yeah. Right. I'm not right. overthinking something. Yeah. I'm not stressed or worried. So it's sort of a good sign for my system. That there's space for that to be happening. That's just as clear audience mm -hmm. as talking to the dead. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what you're saying is like there, the intuitive element is what the song is that's happening. Yeah. It's what it means when that happens. Mm -hmm. And those are important to know because again, it doesn't happen the same for everyone mm -hmm. and not to be a broken record on every episode, but this is why you can't just do one program in one person's way of doing things right? because you'll miss how something works for you. Exactly. And I think when we start to deprogram, like we talked about in our signs episode, yeah. right? That like, not every sign is like a warning <laughs> or like you're doing the right thing or you're doing the wrong thing. So I like, don't, right. I don't think any signs are those things, to be honest. No, I agree. Yeah, we talked about rare. that in that episode, yes. but yes. like, like when you're doing this and these experiences are happening to you with Claire audience, like I think everyone wants to take all of this intuition in yeah, and say like, well, what does this mean for me? Or how am I going to tell the future with it? Or yeah. how am I going to like, <laughs> but for me, when I hear like a certain song, that's more, that's like the way that my intuition can like click into a certain state. Yes. Right. Which is like just as intuitive, but it's not as showy. It's not like, you're not, you're not like doing divination or, or, talking to the dead or whatever, like, yeah. but it's just as powerful because like my brain can snap me into a state that I need to be in with a song mm -hmm. that just starts playing. But don't you actually think that's more powerful? Yes. And it's in, more useful. In my opinion, that's the real incredible power of intuition. Exactly. Is that it can alter your state for you, that your, what's happening is that your desire, which mm -hmm. is your intuition, when we desire to feel more of this feeling. Mm -hmm. And your clear audience went, got it. And like, I just clicked this, you into it. I was just going to say, this makes me sound very old, but I'm just imagining like a record coming down. You remember yes. how they would do yes. that? And then starting to play for you to right. help get you to that place. Exactly. And it happens. You're not thinking it. Like, it's in like nanoseconds. Yes. Because intuition doesn't run through your brain. Right. It, your brain reacts to it and is mm -hmm. involved in it, of course. But it's, it's just a knowing. It's just a thing that happens. So it's like your system knows mm -hmm. how to do that for you. Right. And that is such an amazing thing to have in your life. And it might be happening and you don't know it. Mm -hmm. Or just by working on your Claire audience a little bit, and I'll give you some tips, you know, shortly on like how to mm -hmm. strengthen it, that can happen for you. Yeah. Like that's amazing. I'm not saying it's not amazing to talk to the dead. It is. Mm -hmm. But that to me is more amazing. Yeah. It's just not as flashy or showy or you can't do it for an audience like it doesn't so, make you look better than everybody else right so like but it's happening internally it's yeah. making you show up better for work or show up better to a job interview or whatever yes. like it's all just as helpful and powerful yes or just for yourself mm -hmm. just have a better day mm -hmm. great good stuff hearing music in dreams mm -hmm. this is an experience i've had mm -hmm. but i would not call it common i don't know if i've had that okay if, but there are people who are very strongly clear audience that will tell you that they, this happens frequently to them. I bet, yeah. Okay. What I honestly think, I think that you probably, all of us hear music in dreams, mm. but when you wake up, you don't hold that. Whatever your stronger clairs are, I think you hold the the things that you need to sort of finish yeah. putting through your conscious mind, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So. I'm not going to hold music or a sound as much as I'm going to hold a, a symbol or like I will hold a word, but I'll see the word. I won't hear. I'm not holding a sound. Does that make sense? Yeah. And as a clear cognizant, I, I wake up with the feeling of it. Yes. Like the frustration or whatever. Yes. So whatever you're waking up, holding on to is mm. evident of your stronger clairs. Right. Okay. And again, like we talked about in the clairvoyance episode, it's, it might not be your strongest. It's the one that you've 
created the most path, most pathways to. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's important to always know about all of them and be working on them. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. I've said this before, but if you are someone who, when you tell someone about your dream, you remark on the volume of things, you are a clear audience person mm. because they are the only ones that do that. Right. I have never been like, it was so weird how loud my dream was or how quiet the space was that I was in in this dream. Me neither. That doesn't happen to me. I don't think so. But it does happen to Claire Audience. Yeah, it does. Okay. Thinking that your name is being called when it isn't. Okay. This is my asterisk (laughs) ones for the outside ears because I have heard my name with my outside ears being called when there was nobody here Um, or something that happens frequently is that my husband and I are home, just the two of us, and we're in different rooms. And I go, what? You just called me. And he's like, I absolutely no, I did didn't. not call you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. That happens almost as much as the clairvoyant version, which is like you mm-hmm. see something out of the corner of your eye. And you're yeah. Like, what was that? This does happen. Now, I can't tell you if I'm fully hearing it with my outside ears or my inner ears. But right. like, I do hear, this makes me sound cuckoo. I do hear my name being called inside my head. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not like I'm going like, who said that? (laughs) Yep. Right. It's more of like someone rang a doorbell to be like, can I say something? I have, there's information for you to get. Right. Okay. Yep. And if it's coming that way, it's because for some reason I'm not paying attention to the clairvoyant sign and the claircognizant sign that already came. That's Mm -hmm. like a, that's like she got to ignore those, but we know that, you know, clear audience is a little now. more rattling right. for you because yep. it's not as normal. So yep. we're going to use that. Gotcha. Okay. This is something that happens. If it happens to you, well, the thing is it has happened to you. It's happened to everybody where they've had experiences right. like this. Yeah. That it just happens more to people who are clear audience mm-hmm. than people who aren't us. Yeah. That makes sense. But very common. And just go like, what needs my attention? You don't necessarily need to go who. Right. You can, mm-hmm. but it's probably like something you need to know inside yourself exactly okay getting a word or phrase stuck in your head just as much as getting music stuck in your head is a clear audience experience i will say the same word over and over and in fact it's not really super like downloading of information Mm -hmm. but i'll be doing something and i'll hear a word in a song or a phrase in a song and i will kind of be obsessed with how beautifully poetic it is or how much it describes a feeling. or yeah. And so that is a clear audience experience. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, seen. is it like, oh my God, call the newspaper because I just, you know, right. that Florence and the Machine song just really bowed me over that phrase or whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, right. But do I hear people on TikTok, especially with like a Taylor Swift lyric, like say it over and over again and, and be like oh. really affected by it? Yes. Yes, I do. Right. Have I read a poem before that made me have to like lay on the ground and close my eyes for a few minutes? Yes, I have. Right. That is a clear audience experience because the things that you're hearing, the, the lyricism of it and the way the words are structured is affecting you emotionally right. is exactly what clear audience is. Yep. We've all had that moment. Yes. Okay. Um, In a tough moment, hearing someone else's voice talk to you. This is a thing that I hear a lot from people, and it is something that has happened to me. So this is another asterisk thing. And I I went back and forth a million times about including this (sighs) because I feel like people get stuck on this being the only clear audience experience. But I also feel like if I don't address it and say it, people are going to be like, well, what about this? Well, they definitely would because I do think it's a common experience. Yes. So I was in a, I, I was driving home from seeing a medium. Talk about poeticness. Right. Okay. If you're from Massachusetts, I was coming home from the Cape. So it was a long drive. It was at night. Okay. People from Massachusetts will understand the extra layer of that. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting close to home and I see a car going really, really fast, crazy fast from uh-huh. side street. Okay. It comes and it is going to hit me. And the car coming on the other side of the road in my direction on the same street starts swerving at me as well. And I heard my grandfather, mm-hmm. his voice say, close your eyes. Right. You've told the story. Okay. 
That was not a normal Claire audience experience. Now, when I opened them, a crash had happened and I wasn't in it and I don't know what happened, right. but I just did. If you've had that experience and people are like, how could you close your eyes in that moment? If you've had that experience before, you don't even, there's no thought. Guessing. No, you just do what the voice said. Like it's, right. it's not, there's not enough time to think about it. That's mm-hmm. basically it. But d- the thing is that like, if you only think that's what a clear audience experience is, that's mm-hmm. going to hurt you. But that is an extreme version of a clear audience experience. Yes. Most of them are not your dead grandfather telling you to close your eyes in a car accident. So no, the, the, that, you know what I well, mean? Well, that scenario is very extreme. Yes. But like the actual situation isn't as extreme. The if you were I've talked to a lot of people who are in a car accident or in a very dangerous situation, and they've said at one point I heard a loved one in spirit, mm-hmm. fill in whoever, a grandmother, a grandfather, a parent, a sibling, mm-hmm. or whatever, who's in spirit, tell me what to do. Right. That does happen. Yes. I mean, I've heard people talk to me. Like, I've yes. heard my father talk to me. Yes. But I just, I'm making this face as you're talking because when I run it back, I don't think it's actually his voice. Uh Uh-huh. Like I can hear it in my head and I can hear the message, but, and maybe that's just a problem with like me or Claire Cognizance, but like, that's where the, that's where the, the, the the self-doubt comes Mm -hmm. because instantly I know it's a message. It's like, no, James do this, which is what like my father would say to me. Yeah. But because it's like, I don't exactly remember his voice anymore. Yep. So like, it's, it's not like very obviously like it was like he was obviously your grandfather. Yeah. Like, this isn't very clearly his voice, but I know yeah. it's from him. Yeah. But then you give it 10 seconds and you're like, well, it was just your voice. Like maybe it was just you. Which that's an, that's such a good point because that, that's going to happen. That train of thought when right. something like this happens to you. And if your only definition of clear audience is hearing into another dimension, right. then you're screwed because exactly. you're going to be like, I didn't just hear into another dimension. No, and that wasn't exactly his voice. So no, it couldn't right. have been that. I was right. making it up. Right. Or right. maybe you heard your own voice say it, but you thought of your you thought of your dad. Right. Or it was in your dad's cadence. Right. All of exactly. this is the same thing. Like I wouldn't thing. say it like that. Yes. Right. Like all of that's the same I don't usually hear my dead relatives speak to me in their voices. Right. That is Same. the one time I have ever done that. Yeah. And literally have done classes and done mediumship professionally. Like right. that's not a common experience. Right. But can it happen? Yes. And is it because you heard into another dimension? Personally, I don't think so. No. Personally, I think the information and the energy hit you and it came into a clear that that quickly did what it needed to do for you. I think right. that your intuition works differently when your your ego flags a highly dangerous situation. Yeah, so I don't I don't think it's worth even figuring out if my grandfather in spirit entered the car and, and said it to me. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Well that's why some people only feel connected to their intuition during emergencies because right. it, you your body's in such a state that it has to allow it. And I also think it's so shocking when something like that happens that you would tell people about it. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. But you're not going to tell people about how you got like a little message from your dad the other day in right. your own voice. Exactly. That you should do this or you should look over right. here. Because then should... I got to convince everybody about it and I don't want to have that conversation. Right. That's the thing because there's so there's such like a thing where you have to prove that it was giant. Correct. So we don't talk about the little things. And. I would like to also just say that when we're talking about the Claire's and all like how we have, we all have all the Claire's, right? Yeah. Like my example of like hearing my father is very much layered with my own Claire cognizance. Mm -hmm. Like I heard it in my head, heard the message and I just knew Mm -hmm. air quotes that it was him Yeah, because that's my Claire cognizance then like processing that information also yes and if you're not as clear cognizant right the voice may be more in the tone of the person right because you don't have the clear cognizance telling you that to verify it right so it's it's just right there's this the problem with perspective the thing right. that i think about the most in the middle of the night when i can't sleep 
I've said this before, that you'll never fully understand how someone else interprets anything, anything. even like a color. True. I have, I would never be able to tell. Dining room. (laughs) But you'll never be able to tell if what you're calling green at green or brown or blue or swamp or whatever. Right. If you're we're col- joking about her colorblind husband. Right. But like, you'll never know if we're right. saying, we don't know if what, what I see as the sky that I describe as blue is what you would describe as blue. Right. You could be what I describe as black. Like right. you have no, you'll never figure right. that out. So I will never be able to tell you what your clear audience experience is going to be like, because I have no I have absolutely no ability to do that, nor does any single human. Right. You can get close sometimes, I think, but you're never going to really. All you can do is give details on your own experiences, and then people will interpret it and bring it to what works for them. That's it. Yep. All right. That was, I started to go off on a side. (laughs) Um, So, speaking of side trains of thought, if you are, this happens to me in the car constantly. How did I get into this thought? Yeah. Like you try to backtrack the train. Like where, how, what led me here? Right. Okay. And now, do I think that every time it's a major Claire audience experience? No. no, but I think every time it happens, you're using your Claire audience. True. This is the difference people, people want to be like, wait, did my intuition spark this or did something else? That doesn't really matter right. because if you're like, why am I thinking this thought? Yeah. The second that happens, your clear audience is is present. Yep. So it doesn't really matter if it yep. started it or not. Exactly. But I, I'm all the time. I'm like, why did I start thinking about this person? I wonder if people with ADHD are more likely to be clear audience because that's what my ADHD brings me down these like yeah like wild yeah. trains of thought. And I'm like, wow, how did I get there? I think ADHD people are more likely to question how they got somewhere. Yeah. And maybe it's more, a more common experience for mm-hmm. an ADHD person to be like, I was thinking about this and then all suddenly I was thinking here. over here. So maybe they all, it doesn't register as much right. too. I, I, I think all of that stuff is a factor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, words pop in your head or pop out at you. This happens to me. So okay. I kind of said this about words before, but what happens to me is that someone will be talking and then it's, this is more clairvoyant the way I'm describing it, but it's like somebody highlighted the word. But what I hear Claire audience people say is like, it's almost like the tone is different in how you said that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So people who are Claire audience also notice tiny changes in tone yep. when you speak. Correct. Okay. I do too, but I'm staring. I'm, I'm, I probably more noticed your body language change before I noticed your tone, but I do notice your tone. But, but when you say something, I've done this to you a million times. Yeah. I'd be like, can you go back to that word? Cause there's something energetically around right. that word for you that we need to talk about. Or I'll be like, here's a word, but I don't think this is the right. Can you get the right word for you? Cause this one doesn't match to you. Right. Those are all clear audience experiences. Yep. Oh, I noticed tone like, yeah. To the point of it being a problem. Sometimes. I bet. And <laughs> to the point of it hurting my feelings. Oh yeah. <laughs> like hurting well, my own feelings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I'm hearing more than even the person that's speaking hears. Well, yeah. You know, I feel like that should be the like motto of the intuitive people club. Exactly. It's like I read into that further than you did feelings. and you're the one saying right. it. Yeah. It's also a rejection sensitivity problem. Sure is. For sure. Sure is. Yeah. <laughs> so you mix some clear audience. With some neurodivergence. And some, and some rejection sensitivity. And mm-hmm. even if you don't relate to neurodivergence, if you are very sensitive to rejection, it can be from trauma and stuff as well you mix these two together and you've got, you've got a storm. So it's, it's important to know that about yourself. Yeah. So you can go like, I think I might be going a little too far yeah. with this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also think being intuitive, your feelings get hurt a lot more because you immediately know the, or feel the intention behind what someone's doing and they don't always know it. True. So it's real easy to be offended. I think we just all always have our feelings hurt. Yeah. That's why we try to hang out with each other. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. I want to take a quick break okay. and then we're going to come back and talk about some traits of people with Claire audience and then some ways to strengthen. Okay. All right, Heather. We're going to start this obsess segment with mm-hmm. a little information session. <laughs> yes. Have I said this on here before, this phrase? I'm going to teach everybody about a, a phrase I learned at my kids' elementary school. Oh, yeah. You, you coined this phrase and then I stole it. 
Yeah, like you had I never heard it. it. No. I heard it at school. You said it on the podcast, and it was I? the first time I heard it. Oh, so there's an episode of it happening. <laughs> nice organically. Yeah. yeah. So it's it, the saying is like, "Don't yuck my yum." Mm. So like, mm. if I like something, or if yeah. someone else likes something, yeah, then mind your business. Like, just because you don't like something means it doesn't mean that someone else yeah. can't like something. And that was the way my kids' school taught them about, about like, being thoughtful and yeah. empathetic. Is that, like, yeah. we don't all have to share the same interests. You, you also don't have to be a jerk. Yeah. Can you see my eyes, like, freaking out over Yes, this? I do. Okay. So, Let me just say that <clears throat> before we talk about this subject, I actually do know what we're talking about. Listen, my throat chakra is freaking out. Your eyes are glassy. <clears throat> What's happening? I'll tell you in a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> break. Having a very strong reaction. Some water. <laughs> all right. This is something that the reason is so powerful when you said this sentence, not only is it a cute sentence, right. but it's very accurate. And it it's something that I'm very sensitive to. So if there's a tangent that's gonna follow what right. Jamie's about to say, I'm warning you, it's because people do this to me all, all the, the time. time. All the time. Right. And once you articulated it, and I want you to even continue to explain it, mm -hmm. it helped me so much because I could identify right. why my very sensitive feelings were being hurt or why I was feeling the need to put a lot more boundaries up around people because this is something that happens constantly to me. So I'm saying that because when you hear more about this that we're about to talk about, right. if you're also feeling triggered and your throat chakra dies and your eyes fill up. Yep. Pay attention because this right. is helpful when you have a good phrase. Well, right. I mean, the, having knowing something and then being able to quickly articulate it is helpful when something's affecting you. Yeah. And I think if you're someone that deals with rejection, which is yeah. you're Me. the patron saint of. I am. And I also do to a lesser extent. But like yeah. that don't yuck my yum is like it's saying don't reject me. Yeah. I like this thing that you don't like. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can reject me or that I'm less than you or, or yeah. stupid or whatever the word is yeah. that you have coded. But like, yeah, it's an easy way to teach little kids yeah, to like watch their words. But I also think it needs to be taught to adults. Well, if you teach, if you <laughs> teach people things when they're kids, <laughs> you won't have to like deconstruct yeah. your entire government in political system because people yes. don't know how to behave like that's yes. the point is to like mm. grow children that are kind and empathic and responsible yeah. yeah then you have kind adults yes shocker yes right yes will you give some examples of yucking your yum because the reason not just because it personally bothers me and has created a mini revolution inside me because now I call people out when they're doing it to right. me. And I got to tell you, it's literally the best thing ever, but it's a problem on social media right? where people aren't realizing that what they're doing is bullying. And I know people have a problem with the word bullying, but I kind of don't care at this no, moment yeah, because I mean, it actually yeah. is your intention behind these kinds of actions and statements and, and content or whatever is to make somebody feel bad for your own benefit. Right. So what, I mean, so if you want to like apply it to children, it would, yeah. it would be something as simple as like, like, oh, you open up your lunchbox and someone has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and someone goes, oh, I hate peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. And so you talk to the kid about like, well, that's okay. You don't have to like it, but right. that's Susie's favorite lunch. So that's yes. what she's having. And, yeah. and that's great. Yeah. And that you build upon that theory yes. so that when the, those children are adults, they're not on TikTok saying are you seriously wearing skinny jeans still are you still doing the millennial pause when you start your video yes like that's yes. yucking someone's yum like yes. you're saying i don't like that yeah and so you shouldn't do it i don't like the yeah. way skinny jeans look so therefore you shouldn't wear them anymore and you should feel bad about the fact that you right. do you should it, feel silly or lesser and it doesn't matter that no. those jeans are someone's yum that they feel comfortable in them they feel good in them they feel stylish in them do you know how hard it is what does it matter to feel good about the way you look or even um, to I just do. i do yes how about even just to not <laughs> feel bad about the way let's yes. not even get to good Correct. Let's just not feel negative Terrible, right. about the way we look. That is a feat. If you accomplish that in a day, I'm so proud of you. Same. I'm so proud of you. That is a good day yeah. because that is really hard to do. Mm -hmm. 
And maybe content creator, the reason that you feel the need to be mad at someone probably from a different de generation right. in their skinny jeans is because you don't feel good in your own skin. Exactly. Okay. But it is not okay to do that. If you want to wear skinny jeans and that makes you feel good, mm -hmm. then you should wear skinny jeans and you should strut your stuff in your, your skinny jeans. Yeah. Because first of all, no, second of all, third of all, fifth of all, whatever point I'm on, <laughs> <laughs> don't do capitalism's work for it. It's doing it just fine. You don't have Good to point. change your style every two seconds. If you want to, right. please do. But if you want to continue wearing the same pants that you wore since 1985, then you do that. Exactly. If you want to do that weird 70s swoop thing with your hair, yeah. And, the, and people call it dated and how can you still be doing that? Kick them in the shin. Because if that makes you feel good about yourself, that's exactly what you should do. Right. And why on earth do you care what somebody else does to feel good about themselves? Right. Why? It's not only just the content creators. They're definitely yeah. doing it. But it's also, you, you'll see it in the comments. Like, oh. I see so many videos of women our age, like middle-aged women, yeah. who are doing a video on something completely different yeah. and then the comments are yeah. just people like attacking that yeah. they're wear like whatever they're wearing yes yeah i mean i know we're harping on the skinny jeans but right. it's, it's it, it could or be the, anything the, the tuck the front tuck the oh, mom tuck. The french tuck yeah Come we on. all do Ten that friends taught me that me too and you know what if you don't want to do the tuck then don't do it but if i feel better about the shape of my body when i tuck my shirt then right. you better step the fuck off of my tuck 100%. Why does that bother you? Why do you care if someone's house is all gray or all beige or all white oh, or right. all every room is a different color? Do what you want in your house. Why yeah. on earth would that bother you? It's so strange. Well, I mean, it's like everything in this world, right? That it's it's just projection. Yeah. Like I'm, like nothing that anyone says about you actually has anything to do with no. you. It's about them and it's projection and them feeling insecure, but that's a lot easier yeah. said than done to know that when you're the you're the yeah. victim of that. Like when you have yes. someone criticizing you yes. in the way you are dressing or the way you're looking or the way you do your hair or Yes. I saw this this rant started with a me on a Marco Polo to Jamie ranting mm -hmm. about seeing a TikTok. I couldn't find it again, which really bothered me. I wish I had like saved it immediately. Mm. But it was this woman stitching another woman. So this woman was like, she was a middle-aged woman and she went, she was getting her hair done. She was doing one of those videos like oh yeah, where you, you know, piece together the whole process. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, I want to get the old money brown. Oh, right. I remember. Okay. You saying this. Now I know the name of that's a bit problematic, but that's had nothing to do with what she was talking about. And the woman was so excited to get her hair done mm -hmm. and to get this look. And this woman came in and stitched it and was like, oh my God, I can't believe people are paying for mousy brown. Like completely yucked her yum just was like this woman is doing something for herself she's trying to feel good about herself she's excited do you know the feeling of when you're excited to do something to your hair and you're excited and nervous at the same time because you know that you're making an energetic change when you yes. make that physical change and mm -hmm. for someone to shit on that is like the lowest of lows in my opinion right and then this the to extrapolate on that is like how shitty do you have to feel? Yes. And how and what such bad space you have to be in yeah. that you feel so compelled and so irritated by someone else's right. hair choice what? that you make a video about it shitting on them? Like yeah. and it had the energy of that is thousands trash. and thousands of views of and comments and likes and it it just irritates me. I mean, recently, this is like such a weird example, but today I was on the ticker talker mm -hmm. and there was like a thousand stitches of Nick Lachey. Did you see this? I was going to say this and everyone's making fun of him. And I'm like, what is wrong with this? Like, I know. It, he's singing like a Halsey song or something, right? Like, Yeah. And, and he's, he's, first of all, he's doing like a lot of like kind of gyrating-y things. But I'm also like, did you never see 98 Degrees sing? Because that's all of their movements. It's ingrained in him. But also, I thought he sounded really good. I had this, that's so funny. I had the same reaction, like... <laughs> Jeez. And also, like, that's what you're choosing to share in the world I today. Know. And, like, I, I don't think Nick Lachey needs me to defend him. No, but, like... But, like, what a weird... Why are there... Why did I have to scroll so many times? Like, every third video was someone making fun of Nick Lachey. And I I'm know. like, what the hell? Well, that's the problem is that the algorithm loves someone yucking someone else's yum. I guess. But the, my thing is, like, if you see that, just be like... Don't no, thank you. interact with it. Like, yeah. 
stop it. If you get sucked into it, move on. Like, don't make a video like saying that just his ex, Jessica Simpson, looks so different now. Yeah, she's 20 years older well, than the you, picture you're comparing her to. Leave her alone. And has had children. I mean, geez. I mean, oh my God. I just can't. So I could go on forever about this. Maybe we'll do a whole episode on it. I don't know if you guys want more on this, but like it gives me the vibes of, I see the same people who are making these stitches mm -hmm. also be like, can you believe people treated people this way on tabloids in the late nineties and early two thousands? And I'm like, you're doing you're the doing same right thing. Now. Right. You're doing it right now. Yeah. That'd be nice. Be nice. Let's talk about some traits of Claire audience. Okay. Okay. So people who have this, as one of their more developed mm -hmm. Claire's uh, will be very connected to music. Yes. Okay. Not every Claire audience person is a musician. No. However, most of the people who are musicians, especially who are into like music and hear music in their head and stuff are very Claire audience. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think of my son, like he'll all of a sudden be like, I had this, I heard this like combination of sounds in my head that I think would be cool. And I'm like, but I've never heard a random combination of sounds right. that I thought would be a cool song. True. That's amazing. That's a right. Claire audience thing. Yes. Okay. Uh, people who talk out loud to themselves, that's usually a Claire audience person. Yeah. You do that all the time. <laughs> it's also like an only child thing. That's like a latchkey okay. kid thing. Okay. 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 But yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I don't. My mother does. My mother I talks do all the time. to herself all the time, so much so that sometimes she gets mad at my dad for not answering her and he's like I thought you were talking to yourself I didn't you don't change your tone when you start talking to me exactly. and she is definitely clear audience so just if that's a thing that you tend to do you're yeah. probably clear audience. I've done that you have <laughs> that's really funny okay uh auditory learner so if you need to hear it to learn it you mm -hmm. are most likely clear audience okay uh if you don't actually enjoy quiet is a good sign that you're probably clear audience. Okay. Because this is true for me too. And again, it's not in my top two, but if you're like, I want you to sit quietly, I will, but I'll probably put music on or something in the background because that creates quiet for me. Exactly. Um, my exactly. son needs a fan when he goes to bed. Yes. Partially for the air, but also for the sound. It's too quiet. It's too quiet yep. because qu silence is actually pretty loud. Sure is. That's clear audience coming in. Okay. So if you actually enjoy complete quiet so that your brain can be blank, you're probably not super dialed into clear audience. Right. Okay. But if you like, you like quiet, yeah. but it's not necessarily quiet in your head. Right. You probably are. Clear audience. Okay. Strong inner voice. Okay. So everyone, not everyone has an inner voice, but everyone has a way of communicating with themselves. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So people whose inner voice is loud and who are spend the majority of their day accompanied by their inner voice are most likely clear audience. Right. Okay. My inner voice isn't necessarily always chatting, but mm -hmm. I'm always aware of the running of yep. some sort of information in it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you're clear audience, you're more aware of the actual physical voice. Y yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, the actual words. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clear audience people do this thing. This doesn't really happen to me, but I've witnessed it many times where all at once they're almost startled by, by an idea. Like if you think of the cartoon version of a, like a light bulb going off on top of someone's head yeah. when they get an idea, I really think whoever created that visual was a clear audience person right. because it's it's really cool. I wish this happened to me. It kind of has happened, but not in the same way it does to clear audience people where this they're literally just like walking and then they'll be like, they'll like freeze. You see their body like physically react. Yep. And it's like an idea, like it's like the idea of the words hit them. I didn't realize I did that until you just said it. I could <laughs> definitely do that. To me, it's a lot more of a claircognizant experience where I'm like mm. suddenly aware that there's something that has downloaded that I need to dig into. I don't, but it's not like this whole idea for a, something just comes and hits me in one second. That happens to Claire audience people though, mm. and it's so bananas cool. Yeah, and I like move because I feel like I got to do something about it. Yes. Like it hit me and I have to be like, wait, what am I going to do? What's the next step? Yes. Yeah. It's like all at once yeah. though. It's amazing. Yeah. For me, it's more like Ooh, something I better sit and explore. Mm. So it, it's it's very different. So it's – it's so, they don't have to unpack it as much. Right. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, noise sensitivity. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, do I have to say any more? Can that be other stuff? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it could, it could be a little bit, a myriad of things. Yes. But, like, but if you're having it, clear audience is a part of the experience. Right. It isn't just like, oh, it's not that I'm clear audience. It's that I'm autistic. No, no. It's probably both. It's both. Yeah. <laughs> the experience itself right. of noises having any kind of emotional effect on you is a clear audience experience. Yeah, you can also have like a like noise sensitivity because you you have PTSD. I mean, right. yes. but like you're but your clear audience, clear audience is processing it exactly. So right. it's always there. Okay, right. uh, they say things like, "Do you hear what I'm saying?" Yep, clear audience people say that. Yep. Okay very conscious of the volume of their voices and the volume oh of my God. other people's. That's me. I know. Okay. This is my example. How oh I God. always know when I'm watching someone on a stage, when they're coming to speak, even if I'm watching it online, like they always do this thing with the mic. It's always the same. And I'm always like clear audience a second it happens. Okay. They take the mic and they start talking and they're like, how's this? Can you guys hear me? Does that sound okay over here? Just naturally, they don't even they don't even start right. doing anything, and yeah. they do that. Mm -hmm. That is a clear audience person yeah. because they, to them, the volume of something is going like if it's not it's right, right, it's not going to hit right. So it's right. it's a priority. Yeah, you do this. Well, I do it not like in that, but I do yeah. it when I'm out, like, like to dinner. Yes, I'm very aware of how people, how loud people are being, or people that I'm with, if they're being very loud. Oh yeah. I'm very aware. Yes. And I can tell that they're not. That's such a good example of how your clear audience is supporting one of your ego fears. Exactly. Right? Like the scan for like, am I behaving appropriately? Am I being good? Am I being a right? good girl? And my clear audience is like, we got Whoa, this. we're too loud. Like we're too yeah. loud. We got to bring this shit down. Right. Right. And this is where people get confused. Like, was it my ego or was it my intuition? And I'm it's, always like, it's both. It's both. Like, right. are you doing something from a fear-based place when you're doing that? Yeah. Yeah. But that's not necessarily bad. No. I mean, you didn't like shush everyone and no. hurt their feelings. Like that no. might be not great. Right. But if you're clocking it and then sort of monitoring it. That's fine. That's both. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let me give you some tips for strengthening. Are you ready? Also, I could go on with the traits. There's well, definitely there's... more, but those are the biggest ones. Right. You'll start to pick up your own too. Like yeah. hearing that group of examples, you'll then start to realize how you're doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Sit quietly. I know mm -hmm. already clear audience people are like, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. But what I want you to do is isolate the sounds mm -hmm. and decide what strikes up for each one. Okay. Okay. So sit outside and get rid of your other senses the best you can. Close your eyes if that's comfortable to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most clear audience people, that is. Clairvoyant people, not always. Not, okay? right. Yep. But you're going to soften your gaze or whatever you need to do that you're not really in your other senses mm -hmm. and just listen. And when a car goes by, what does that make you feel? Really concentrate on that sound. When you hear that bird over there, how does that make you what it really concentrate on that sound? Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is reacting feelings wise to what you're hearing. Yep. Okay. Then you can also go, what do I picture when I hear that noise? Mm -hmm. Do I, I hear that car? What kind of car do I imagine that looks like? Mm -hmm. Okay. So your clear audience is striking up your other senses to react and to do things. That's going to strengthen your clear audience a yeah, lot. Okay. Definitely. And you're, you'll use that more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask questions, frame getting intuitive information as a question. This is good for everybody, but this is how you really strengthen your clear audience yeah so if you're trying to get like a sign or a message or guidance like what should i do like whatever i just phrase it as a question make it like can you, what would be a good sign for me to have right now that would give me some information mm -hmm. like phrase things as a question because that will activate your clear audience right does that make sense mm -hmm. okay a guided meditation that creates a little space in it not the whole thing, but it creates like a, a minute or two where you hear your own thoughts. Gotcha. The combination is important. Yep. If you're guided, will will trigger your clairvoyance. Yes. But that space will let you do the other. Exactly. Okay. If you're a clear audience, and I said go do a meditation where it's just music in the background. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's easy for you. You're gonna. Got it. All mm -hmm. kinds of messages. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what I want you to do is have someone direct you 
keep on the focus and then allow it and then come back. That will strengthen that skill more. Does that make sense? Okay. Frequency music. If you're a super clear audience, you probably already dig frequency music. Yes. You can get it free on YouTube. I mean, if you know a good oh, yeah. somebody who makes it, like please support them and buy their music. But like yeah. it's not hard to find. No. And that will have a huge effect on you, especially your nervous system. Like for clear audience people, it's such a direct line. Maybe even like one of those sound baths or something. Yes, absolutely. Like singing bowls. Yes, and things like that. all of those things. Anything with sound is going mm. to very naturally put you in a very grounded state. Mm. Okay, and sort of like what you're saying, drum music. Ooh. I yep. mean, first of all, is there anything more powerful than like listening to like really powerful drums? I I don't know what there know. is. Yeah, but especially something with like a loud pounding consistency like that will help strengthen your intuition. And I would say the easiest one to do is to feel emotion based on sound for clear audience people, mm-hmm. by the way, for me, it would be visual, but yeah, you know what I mean? So like sit and go like, how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel mm-hmm. with that? Yeah. Okay. Anytime a song is on or a person is giving a speech, just decide what you pick up for information based on the sounds or the words that isn't being portrayed. Gotcha. Okay. Clear audience people are the best at spells. Mm. Spell work is just a very natural thing for them. So do them practice. Yep. You guys are the best at it anyways. So do it. Mm -hmm. This is both you and I love spell work and spells and do them, but I gotta, I gotta confess that I don't always say it out loud because it doesn't, really matter as much to me i don't but when a clear audience person says a spell out loud the whole i feel like the whole world just like shifts immediately it's yeah. very powerful mm-hmm. so okay um if you're a clear audience person let me tell you right now you need to go get some energy work on your throat chakra oh yeah yeah you making sound and you receiving sound are two very different experiences and That's one true. of them is easy for you and the other one is much harder because you naturally feel that there's a lot more weighing on the sound yeah. than other people. That's a great point. Okay. That's a great point. Let's go get some Reiki, please. Yeah. When you pick up a word, because we all do that, clear audience or not clear audience, but when you pick up a word, it just pops into your head, ask someone what it means to them near you. Okay. And notice what it means, what you got and what they got and see what happens. Interesting. If someone's talking and a word sticks out, be like, what does that word mean to you? Hmm, Interesting. Stop and do that and tell me the magic that happens when you do. Huh. Okay. I have a few last additional notes and then we'll wrap this up. I think the people can tell that we like talking about the clears. I love talking about the clears. Me too. Okay. So additional notes that I know someone's going to (laughs) say. First... We're going to head off here. We're going to just, emails. I, yeah, before you send an email, please listen to this part. Okay. <laughs> Some people report hearing voices that don't, don't sound human who are clear audience. This is not necessarily dangerous and bad and scary. And this is what, there's so many things that I see where it's like, oh my God, you heard a deep scary or a voice that doesn't sound human. It, it just that's more common than you think okay and it's not necessarily a cause for alarm to the point where you were like is that my grandfather's voice is that my dad's voice is Mm. it mine none of that really matters if you're picking up something and it's coming in it's it's of interest you should always have good boundaries yes but like i don't think you need to like pee in your pants about it no gotcha does that make sense yes i don't personally have that experience no but some people do, and it makes sense to me that if you're very good at picking up sound, and sound is the way your intuition takes things in, that if part of the message is that this is like something that needs a different kind of attention, that the sound comes in not sounding human or what you're expecting, that that would be part of it. Yeah. Okay. Could it be that some demon creature is trying to talk to you? Yeah. Do I think that's what it is? No. Yeah, and if like if you're seeing someone that's saying that, use your own clair yeah. to decide like if you think that person's saying that because they want to be spooky and scary and get engagement online, or if yeah. you really think that like that's what's happening, like it use can, your yeah. use your own intuition. It gives that. me the vibes of when people tell other people that they're cursed and they have to keep coming back for four or five sessions. Yep. 
it gives me that kind of vibe when people are talking about this. But the thing is, I don't want you to turn away from using your clear audience if this happens to you. So I don't like the scare tactic of it. I agree. What I do want you to do, no matter what level of intuition you are, where you are on the spectrum, what clairs are your top is to have good boundaries for anything, including energy. There's plenty of episodes where I, I talk say, about the episode. mist. Yeah. There's a boundaries episode where you can, you can hear about that, but like the state that you're in is important. The boundaries that you have are important. So just in general, you should be protecting yourself in that way. Correct. And I think if you have that be a part of your practice, you're good. Yep. Okay. Clear audience doing it should not cause you distress. And if it does, you should immediately stop. What do you mean? So there's this sort of thing where like they show people who are like getting messages. I feel like this is more on TV than anywhere else oh. where they're like, oh God. And the message is, it's so scary. And they're oh. like getting a stomach ache and they're falling over and you know, their skins. Clutching their ears. Yeah. Tingling and right. stop if that Yes, happens. please. If anything makes you feel like that. No, because stop. that's not... If, if clear audience and hearing sounds makes you feel like that, then it's not one of your strongest, most developed ones. There's not a lot of pathways because people who are very intuitive using their top clairs is a very normal, everyday yeah. kind of boring experience. So if that's your experience, immediately stop because right. there's some, there's trauma. You need, you need different kinds of help if that's going on and that's okay. And there's, I'm not shaming you for it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's. If you see in a movie like someone's downloading messages or like hearing from the dead, but then they have to like lay in a coma for two days afterwards every time, that's not real and not how the experience should go. No, no, no. Never. Okay. Last one. I said this in the beginning, but I'm going to reinstate it. Claire audience is the one that the most people go, oh my God, I had no idea that's what that was. Yes. Okay. Even you did that in this episode yeah. and you know a lot about intuition. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. that's my Claire audience doing yeah. that. That is the most common one yeah. that this happens with. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because hearing stuff and listening to stuff is just so a part of who we are yeah, that you don't you do all day long is you're here, you're taking in information. And I think a lot of people hear someone talk about like tuning into their thoughts. Mm -hmm. And if you're clear audience, you think that's the same mm -hmm. because it seems the same. Right. But for the people of us who aren't, that's, to tune into like those kind of intuitive words and sounds is yep. a very different experience for mm -hmm. me than just tuning into my own thoughts. Yes. So it becomes very confusing in that way. Yep. And I understand it. Yeah. And I'll say one more time, telepathy is not the same thing as clairaudience. Okay. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> Had to be said. I think we should go listen to some music while we drink coffee and we'll have a clairaudient experience while we have coffee, which is what we need right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay.